Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 12 of Night Call. And last time we finished our first case, I guess. And now we're gonna look into the second. I guess we need to start a new game then. Probably. Maybe. We will see. So what I'm really interested in is to find out how these are all connected, maybe. Like, if this is a consecutive story, like, we would, this will... The chapter, the Angel of Death, will be... Will take place after the judge, or whatever. Wait. Random victims, unknown motive, weird case, slightly more difficult than the others. Or the victims may feel random at first, but there's a connection, yet the motives might be hard to find. Dark and twisted case. This game will randomly pick an unsolved investigation. Hmm. Okay, so we have, like, th uh, in total three chapters. Let's just continue with the Angel of Death and let's see where that takes us. Uh, I definitely want to go with, like, the story. I mean, it says here that money will be easy to get by. I mean, we did get by, but not that easily, I'd say. Although no, we put, oh no, we took balanced. Yeah, we took balanced. Okay, now I see. Yeah, okay, that makes more sense. Okay, then we will take balanced again. That was my mistake. Okay, so this seems like the same scene as in The Judge. Okay, so I'm maybe just gonna get through this really quick. killer the media are calling the angel of death stuck a knife in your right side that hit several organs oh okay so at least the uh, mo changes <laughs> so last time we were shot and now we were stuck with a knife how nice to be frank you were in a terrible state when they brought you in and we were obliged to put you in an induced okay guess that's that's probably the same as we already read did they... I'm sorry. Did they catch the angel? No. So, did my passenger die again? I guess so. Yes.
Okay, so this time we definitely can say that we were that we're fine. There's no need, we do know. So that's the thing. So it's not really a consecutive story, but it's just different crimes, but like in the same setting, just a little bit different. So I don't know if I'm happy about that or not. I guess it would have been really strange, even probably ridiculous, if a few months after the judge is captured or identified, you kind of have a few months off and then suddenly Boucher stands there again and says hey we have another case for you to solve or you're the murderer again so I guess that would have been strange as well but kind of would have made more sense in terms of the passengers that you have a connection with now because I mean here we see we have driven them three times we know a lot about their story and I wonder if their story just continues so I'm just gonna go there because we we will be able to tell if the story continues or not because they already know us. Okay, so it's them again. Let's see what this is about. The two women getting in a cab give you their address. They say nothing as you start the car. A thin scent of alcohol hangs in the air. They've been drinking. After a moment's silence, the younger of the two breaks the silence. Okay, so we start from the beginning. I don't remember what the question was. I think it, uh, I think it was if pretentiousness is in your genes or something. Um, I, I think I said no, I don't know. So the thing is, I would like to know, I mean, if there's a fourth drive that we could take with them. If we would learn more. Oh, there's a new one. We don't know her. Okay, so I just drove them and it was basically the same. I gave the same answers, I think, as in our first, first meeting. So nothing really new happened they just paid good and that's it so we definitely don't know her so i would like to get to know her from a ground floor window you can hear a baby whining your heart goes out to the parents esmeralda fam get me out of here into the nation oh sh ooh, 39 euros that's nice take it you park in front of the street number the central office gave you. Two minutes go by, three. The building's main door opens abruptly. Out comes a teenage girl, followed by her mother. They are fighting, but you only catch bits of their conversation. The mother in her forties and of Asian descent is beside herself. When she raises her voice, you detect the remnants of an Asian accent. The teenager cuts the conversation short and hops into the cab. She slams the door shut. Nation and buries herself in her phone. Head bowed, she's absorbed by one of those games where you have to crush fruit or crystals. <laughs> After years on the job, you've learned to distinguish between apps, texting, games, email. Her phone suddenly vibrates, she answers. What now? There's a pause. You hear her mother's voice on the other end, same raised voice, same accent. Yeah, I know. Another pause. Yeah, I already told you I knew. She sighs. I said yes. God, what's your problem? Leave me alone. She hangs up. Oh, crazy old bitch. Her game starts blipping and chirping again. Crazy old bitch is your mother? That's not nice to call your mother that. Not your average cab driver. I do my best. Yeah, my mom's a crazy old bitch and my dad's a shithead. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? 
It's true. They hate each other and they hate me. Sure about that? You probably think I'm really rude. Like I care. My parents make my life a living hell. When they got divorced three years ago, it was a nightmare. When they got married again last year, I went fucking insane. Now they're getting divorced again. They have day-long screaming matches on the phone. My mother's lawyer actually gave the case to one of his assistants because he couldn't take it anymore. Oh wow. I'll never have kids. She takes a break to catch her breath. I mean, have you looked at the time? You think it's normal at this hour to put your kid in a taxi and send her to your ex-husband's? She totally freaked when she found out my dad's new girlfriend has been helping me with my French homework. She pauses. So yeah, crazy old bitch, shithead. Maybe they're doing the best they can. Her eyes go blank and she stares back at her phone. Keep your lecture to yourself. Her tone is sharp, uncompromising. You see her watching you in the rearview mirror. She hesitates for a moment then. My mom rips into me all the time. She makes my life hell, hacks into my Facebook account to spy on me, okay? I mean, she grew up in the friggin' jungle. She can't understand what life is like now. My dad, though, he's just a pain in the ass for no reason. He likes giving lectures. He sits down on the bed or the couch, puts on his holier-than-thou look and starts in... Her voice changes. You need to lose weight. You need to do better in math. You need to go to bed before 11 p.m. You need to stop playing stupid video games. Then he flies off to southern Spain for four days with his new girlfriend. So, that lecture of yours, I'll tell you where you can stick it. Oh, you don't have to tell me, I guess. She stops for a moment to catch her breath. Honestly, I wish I could divorce my parents. I'm 16, just two more years and I'll never have to see their ugly faces again. There is a long pause. You're getting closer to Nation. She points to her street and you stop in front of the building. A man is pacing in front, his arms crossed and his expression serious. How much do you want to bet I'm gonna get a lecture? Good luck. Sounds tough. Yeah, right. So if you care... She hands you a bill and gets out quickly to join the man waiting for her outside. They exchange a few words in hushed voices. He puts his hand on her shoulder. You can't hear anything, but you are sure she won her bet. Oh wow, two cents, how generous. Oh no, it's 20 cents? Wait a sec, what? Yeah, probably, I don't know. <laughs> nice, thank you. The door suddenly opens and a woman gets, oh well, who might that be? Having a good night? Yeah, so we just had the same talk with the detective again. I'm a little bit, I don't know, it's a little bit sad that it's still the same. Like, it's still the same dialogue. Because that's just like really, if, if there was something new to it, if she said something, if there was something different about it, it I don't know, it would make it more interesting, but now we just have to do this whole introduction, whatever, all over again. So, let's see who our suspects are. Do we know? Why is RV always a suspect? Okay. Okay, so we have... Again, a lot to read, but first I want to see... So, why is Erby always a suspect? So, so, then we have Gilda, a set designer for the opera, was hospitalized after her mother's death. Difficult relationship with her dad, also working at the opera. Catholic and a member of the Korean community in Paris. Okay, he is... Okay, even the victims don't change. Charles Bougrain, victim number two in the 90s. So, I mean, we know a lot about him already. 
a couple of arrests for breaking and entering got health issues after Rictoden. Jonas Pearson, a brilliant programmer for several startups and companies, wrote books about the simulation we're all living in, destroyed evidence when the police started investigating. But that's not our, um, our informant from the last time, right? No. Pierrette Manderas, chef in La Pierre Restaurant in Paris in financial troubles, was an activist when she was younger, part of the Moonflesh cult. Oh, wow. And Apollonie Girardot, blurry past weird woman. <laughs> wow, that's the description. Probably a rich heir or something. Was born in Guadeloupe, maybe. Night owl. Okay, well then, let's read a few stuff. Hervé's police file, okay. Killer case, police report victim number one. Okay, victim number two, victim number three. Okay, let's first start with the killer case. Then maybe I'll just start with the police reports. Or can we read all of them in one night? Maybe we can get this down in one night to read all of them. Yes. Okay. So, now the arranging begins. This time I will be... I will start earlier with all the arrangements. Okay, well... Victim number two had garlic in her hand. Why is victim number two suddenly a hurl? Victim number two is Charles Beaugrain, so... Charles is kind of a male name, I always assume. Okay, so the murders are like rituals and she's weird. I mean, come on, the other one is in a cult, so... Ah, okay, so that's why... So the murder weapon is a fillet knife, which points to her, but the rituals point to her only? Okay. Okay, so the height is... Whoa! The height is not... She is far taller than this. Why is she a suspect then? It left spare key under doormat. What? Okay, so wait, let's just see what... Okay. Ah, so these are loose ones. RV allegedly robbed fishmonger. Okay. Kitchen window left open by the victim. How is this related to RV? Uh, we suspected in many break-ins. Okay, well, he, just because he's suspected doesn't mean anything. Victim 2 opened the door to the killer. Yeah, I'm still a little bit confused about the victim number 2. So was it a, vo a woman now or not? Victim number 2 had garlic in her hand, but here it says victim number 2 is Charles Bougrin still, which was the same as in the last case. Okay, well, it doesn't really give us a lot of information so far, so let's just end the night. I mean, it's only normal that in the first night we don't really have a clue about anything. So, let's see where we can go investigate this time. Because I think the investigations, like the investigation sites that you can drive to, are like the most important things. I mean, if we haven't, if we haven't gone to the, uh, if we hadn't gone to the um, gun shop or something, we would have never known this. So my problem is now we could go here to to talk to them for the second time. Or we could go here to hear to listen to him for the first time again, and I think he was the the farmer who was um, 
mocked on TV. But I kind of want to see how their story ends. Which at least I hope. Can I take a look at the Pasadex? Yes. Okay, I just want to take a quick look if there is a lot more to discover with them. If I find her. Um, mm -hmm, here. Okay, so we can drive them a lot more times, it seems. I definitely want to see how that goes, so... I'm just gonna do this one real quick. And then we can continue. I mean, what's also pretty cool about them is that they take pretty long taxi rides and they pay good. Okay, so another ride with them. Again, not much new, but they tip really nice again. It's pretty cool. So let's see. I mean, we are fairly close to an investigation point. We don't know him. We know her. Uh, she's the babysitter. Okay. So I kind of figured out maybe a strategy for like completing stories would be to fix on a few on some characters that as soon as you see them you drive them you've been studying the outside of the church for a few minutes now it's fairly recent square with sharp edges gray and ugly this is where the congregation of one of your subjects guild the burger gathered you get out of your taxi and climb a few steps to the front door despite how late it is it's slightly ajar you go inside. The nave stretches out before you. There are a few people sitting in the pews, lots of women by themselves. By the look of their clothes and their age, you're pretty certain they're cleaning, they're cleaning women. Oh wait, so Gilda was the first one. What, didn't it say she was in the Korean community? Or is she Catholic too? In just a few minutes, they'll leave to take the bus or metro to clean offices all over Paris. Your eye is drawn to a very primitive and colorful wall painting on your left. In front of you stands the altar and behind it a man who appears to be the priest. Is this Christoph again? Walk towards the altar. You cross the remaining meters between you and the man. He eventually hears you, turns around and looks you over. His expression is immediately unpleasant. Oh, well, I guess it's not Christoph. May I help you? Yes. Sorry to disturb you. No trouble at all. His face says just the opposite. <laughs> oh, great. I have a quick few questions. Questions about who or what? Um. Gilda Berger? Oh, no, I don't think so. He slowly licks his lips and starts talking again. Our doors are always open to believers. I simply ask that you not disturb the peacefulness of daybreak. You resist the temptation to punch his brains out. Oh. We have a very tight-knit community and our bonds are very strong. He holds one hand out to indicate the exit, like the drop of an X. He says, I wouldn't want to keep you. Don't make a scene. Don't draw any attention to yourself. You turn around and take a few steps away from the altar. You finally see the faces of the churchgoers. All women, one of them is eyeing you. You look down. As you leave the church so you don't lose your temper, you concentrate on the floor tiles. They, they're checkered, black and white. You slam the door shut behind you. Back in your cab, back to breathing normally. You smile as you think about something your boss said. This taxi is your fishbowl. He's right about that. Key in the ignition, motor running, heat on, radio on. You drive far away from the church. Well, that didn't get us anywhere. Maybe I shouldn't have talked to him directly. Oh, I see Kruki again. So what I'm considering is like doing a reload, probably, so I can visit this place again and maybe do over. Maybe I shouldn't have talked directly to the priest. Maybe I should have not walked straight up to the altar. Okay, I tried to reload, but it saved over. That's too bad. That really sucks. Another thing that just happened is that now we have different people to drive, which is kind of a cheat, maybe, if you, I don't know, look for certain people 
to advance their stories and you can just reload wait until they pop up so i think we haven't met her already although i mean rv is one of our suspects so i wonder if his stories change or not i don't know I don't know, I just don't want to waste any more time on stories that I already know, which is kind of annoying. Uh, I, just, I want to go and talk to her. We don't know her yet, I think. We don't know. I'm headed to Charles de Gaulle. Okay, she pays well too. Perfect. Your next passenger is alone and waiting for you on a sidewalk. She gets in a cab and whispers. Hello. She has no handbag or suitcase, just a small handmade sign with an Indian name printed on it. Charles de Gaulle, please. She's young, with a soft and slight accent. Her face shows no emotion. Her fingers play with the small gold chain around her neck. It is the only piece of jewelry she has on. You drive, glancing back at her from time to time. Her head seems to be elsewhere. Everything all right, miss? She nods her head gently, cracking a tiny smile. It's really early. The first planes to come in are the worst. Everyone is exhausted and half asleep. Yes, exactly. And... She sighs. I must confess, I don't really want to go there. A tiny smile lights her face up for a split second before disappearing. Uh, family? My future husband. Oh. Well, future. I've, I've never even met him. Her accent suddenly becomes stronger. You know this habit well. Just before confiding in you, passengers tend to relax into the natural accent. I'm sure he's a great guy, as they say here. Sadness appears in her voice. But I don't know him at all. My parents chose him. It's crazy, isn't it? Are you shocked? Yeah? No? I mean, it is a tradition in some cultures to do that, so it's kind of, you know about it. So are we shocked or not? Oh, let's just say yes, to keep the conversation going. Sad smile washes briefly over her face. But I don't want to make her sad, I'm sorry. It's tradition, or at least it used to be. My parents are a bit old school, even by current standards in India. I chose to study here, not in England, like my sisters. She flashes a smile. I really like the animation that how her hair falls into her face and she pushes it back again. I fell in love with Paris and I decided to stay. I almost never go home. Actually, this is home now. Anyway, my parents insist I meet him. He decided to make the trip, saying he had a meeting as a pretext. I don't know, it's unacceptable, it's a bit harsh. I mean, we just met her. Shall we just say nothing? It's understandable from their perspective. I mean, it worked for them, right? You sense something bubbling up, anger, before she freezes. Some people refuse to let their emotions out. She slowly regains control of her body. What uh, day trips would you recommend outside Paris? nearby she nods Versailles of course it's really beautiful definitely worth it her face lights up oh yes perfect I'm sure he'll like that oh there's Fontainebleau there's a huge park very wild if he likes hiking I don't really know she smiles shyly you prefer to say nothing the airport is not much further Something about the young woman makes you feel uncomfortable. She looks as if she's about to scream, but is holding it in. Time passes and silence fills the cab. Which terminal? Your question startles her. Terminal uh, C. 2C, I think. Let's just say it's supposed to be a nice day out today. A smile crosses her face, then quickly disappears. Yes, I hope so. Thank you. You park the car in front of Terminal 2C. Your passenger grabs her sign and exits the cab. She pauses for a second as if she were about to say something. Then she disappears. 
Wow, she tipped really generously too. Thank you. I think I just picked the wrong people to drive in our first playthrough. I hope that we meet her again. Maybe, maybe we even get the possibility to drive her and her suitor around later. Who knows? But I think she never came up in the last... Oh, it's Santa again! And the DJ and her we don't know. And it's... Uh, what was his name? I don't remember. But Yakuza guy. Okay, but now I want to try this part. I want to try this. Maybe we won't screw this up. I won't screw this up. Please don't tell me that it's stuck again. Okay, we can see Santa, but not... I want to go there. No, not to Santa. Why can't I? Can I drive Santa? Yes. Let's drive Santa again. Just because it's fun. He also pays good. So, we drove Santa. That happened. So it's RV again. We could drive. Or we can go there. I want to go there. You park in front of Etienne's place and turn off the ignition. Who's Etienne? You've known him for years, actually since your first day behind the wheel. He was a skinny teenager you picked up late on Sunday nights to take back to his boarding school in the distant suburbs. It was well paid, but depressing. Etienne has since become a friend, and he's got intel on one of your suspects, Jonas Pierson. You knock on Etienne's apartment door and he comes to open it. He's now a muscle-bound giant who towers over you. Come on in. Don't look at the mess. He talks quickly and his voice is a touch colder than usual. Something's not right. You walk into his pristine apartment. Oh wait, there's a gym towel lying on a designer coffee table. Nice place. He collapses onto the couch. His attitude makes you want to stay standing. You're in deep shit. Huh? The guy you asked me to tail? I know him. Everyone knows him. Jonas. He's famous. He's like your equivalent of... He waves his hand at you. There are no famous taxi drivers. <laughs> hmm. Uh, fine. Well, he's famous. Like, really famous. What's so special about him? He wrote books about simulation theory. You know what that is. You shake your head. You have to imagine our reality is a simulation, that the universe isn't run by God, but by a computer. A computer running software we believe is reality. You get what I wanted? Uh, sorry, I'm talking too much. Your friend clears his throat. You glance around and realize this young man must earn more in a day than you do in a week. I can even tell by the hallway that I'm looking at, if not more. The simulation theory has recently led to the formation of several groups, extreme believers, you might say. Groups that want to test the theory. Or rather, who want to prove it's true. But how? By crashing the system. He stands up and starts pacing. Jonas is the leader of one of these groups. You think he could kill? There's not an ounce of doubt in his voice when he says, kill? Yes, no doubt, if it would prove his theory. Etienne leans over to you. Every one of his arm muscles is flexed. I don't really know what you need this information for, but watch your back. Jonas is no altar boy. He's nobody's fool, not your average nerd. He could be dangerous. A few minutes later, you're back behind the wheel of your car. You feel uneasy. All that is over your head. Simulation, internet... You barely know how to use your phone. Come on. You shake your head and start the cap. You've still got plenty of fish to fry. Okay, well that was certainly interesting. This is Annabelle again. And we know that we need to talk to her about her going to some other place, but I guess we need to start this again. Yeah, I think I'm gonna talk to Annabelle again. Just to see if we could, like, 
reactivate her then later. Also, she's also paying really good. What's happening in this chapter? Dragon backpack, yes, okay. Ooh, so much money. Okay. Definitely, I don't know. If we didn't make profit tonight, then I don't know. Okay, I ran into Lucy and Emily again. We've met Purva. I still made a loss today. No, I didn't. I've met Santa, yes. So I guess there didn't really happen anything new. I did not find Santa's sleigh, so I don't know if, if it's possible to find it in this conversation. Maybe we should have had another one or something. So yeah, that's... Annabelle didn't appreciate my icebreaker? Oh. I don't remember what I said. No. I helped Annabelle keep it together though. I just drove her to the gas station again. Yeah, and I built it yoga. How great for her. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess that's it for today. But now I'm really interested in what evidence we have. So, at the foot of your front door, just behind the drain pipe, you notice an envelope. Oh, okay, we got new evidence. That's good. It's thick and heavy. You can just make out your name written in thick black marker on the front. Your real name. You take a deep breath and go inside. In the envelope, you find more information, just as BC promised. You lay them on the table. Take a few minutes. Okay. Well, then, we have some pictures. Okay, we can definitely look at all of them. But first, before we look at the pictures, I want to see our other evidence that we just got. Okay. So... Wait a second. Catholic and a member of the... Okay, so she's Catholic and a member of the Korean community. Now I get it. Okay, so Jonas is testing his theory. He's a dangerous man. He's a leader of a dark web group. Okay. Written in blood, blood missing. Hmm. Okay, well, let's just take a look at all of these photos. Okay, so then let's see. Why are there so many? <clears throat> Wait, so there's a fish symbol drawn on the wall with blood. And why is that? Okay, I don't really know anything about the Moonflesh cult, but maybe we will find out in one of the spots. Chef in La Pierre restaurant in Paris. Oh, because she's a cook. I see. Message on crime scene three, lust. Message on crime scene one, only one god. Message on crime scene two, he watches you. Hmm. We heard about Jonas today, tonight, that he's trying to prove his theory about the simulation we're all living in. Destroyed evidence when the police started investigating. I don't know. I mean, now that we saw it, we have those messages on the crime scene. They do kind of go into a more religious direction. If Jonas is trying to prove that we live in a simulation, I don't think that he would write only one God or he watches you. If his belief is that we live in a computer simulation, I guess he doesn't believe that there is a god. I think that is what um, what Etienne told us too. Even though we were told that he's a dangerous man and he, that he probably would kill to prove his theory, I still don't think... At the moment I, I, I don't really think that it's him because of those 
kind of religious seeming messages on the crime scene. I mean, this would link us to her, which makes it even more worrisome that I screwed up the talk in the church. Garlic in her hand, murder rituals. Because, I mean, those murder rituals could also not only point to a weird woman, but also to something religious. He watches you could also be connected to only one god. Lust is maybe the sin that the third victim committed. Victim open door to killer. Okay, well, that's about everything I have now. So, that's it. Okay, so due to the whole thing that I we skipped a lot of um, the conversations and the drives in the taxi, we just managed to pull two nights in one episode, but so the next one we only have, there's only one person and he's the informant, so I wonder if he like Oh, that's her. Wait a second. Hey! Okay, so we're gonna do this in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.